Amen, amen. So, so God, God has got so much, not just for you and I, but the church, the body. But, um, but today, I, I want to share, I touched on a little bit just a few minutes ago about, about the threshold. And just, I want to share with you what God just stirred in my spirit this week as, uh, and oh, by the way, if you hadn't noticed, Pastor Brian's taking a little vacation. Amen, he's taking a little vacation. Yeah, he, uh, he said, you be all right on the 11th? I'm like, where are you going? No. <laughs> what are you doing this to me for? No. <laughs> but, uh, but amen, but when, when he asked us, I began to just pray and God began to stir and, uh, and I, it's funny, I've gone from um, preaching maybe three times a year that I've, I've, this is my second word this week, and I'm going to do another one this evening. And I'm thinking, God, what, 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 what were you thinking? What was I saying? I mean, <laughs> but, uh, but with that being said, there's so much God just downloading so much in my spirit and, 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 and so much going on. But today, real brief, I, I plan, Lord willing, because here's, here's the thing, just as then, I want God to minister more than you hear me speak. Amen. Amen? That's what I want. That's, that's what God wants. I want him to touch your life. If he uses me, so be it. If he don't, Amen. He don't, he, he's God. Amen. But, uh, but the, the title of the message today, and this, this was a download from the Lord, was acknowledging the threshold. Acknowledging the threshold. Now, I know when I say that, you're probably thinking, the threshold, that's that little wooden metal strip that I step across. I mentioned that earlier, coming into the church or leaving my house. When I say that, I was, your wheels started turning. How many thresholds did you step across this morning? Amen. How many thresholds did you step across this morning? But I believe the word of the Lord today is this, that just as we, I, I don't want to say it as everyday routine, but just as we walk through every door, we step across the threshold. Can I tell you that spiritually speaking, amen, there are doors open for us, as I said earlier, by the Lord that he wants us to step into. Amen. As a church and as a Corn Baptist church. But uh, I want to share this. I don't know. I, I, I may have mentioned this name before. Uh, Lana Valser. I hope some of you know her or follow her. And, and I, I'm going to I'm I'm watch you when I say this because this is going to determine where we go next. Lana Valser is a prophetess. Amen. amen. Oh, I got two amens. And I got a hand clap. So, so that tells me we're going the right direction. Because we're good with a threefold gift of ministry, evangelism, preacher, and teacher. But we, we forget about apostles and prophets. Amen. We forget about 1 Corinthians, about all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, so, but, but, so I said that just to set you up for where we're going. But uh, I, I generally check her website and, and, and God gives her word. And when she, she puts it in, I, I, I check it out sometimes, not all the time. But every time I've checked it out, it bore witness of my spirit. Amen. And, and we were doing staff meeting Monday night and I was going to share a word out of 1 Corinthians. And I hadn't, I hadn't looked at, I hadn't looked at Lana Valser's website in a couple weeks. And lo and behold, my wife, Christina, texts me. And it was just a clip of a word that Lana Valser had. And it went something like this. That we must recognize that we are crossing over a threshold into realms of destiny. And get this, and the battle increases dramatically at the threshold places. Yeah. Amen. And, and so when she tells, I'm going to say it again. We, is this why I want to do this? I want you to recognize, acknowledge that we are crossing over a threshold into realms of destiny. When I say destiny, I'm talking about God's design. Amen. If you remember back in January, the words that God downloaded in Pastor Brian, not just for Elkhorn, I believe it was for Elkhorn, I believe it was for the body of Christ, was rebirth and rebuild. Y'all, who all remembers that? Rebirth and rebuild. All right. So I'll, I'll, some of y'all refresh your memory. From there, Brother Brian preached a series. Then we had our pastor's panel. And we was talking about rebirth and rebuild in January. And, and uh, this is what God stirred in me. For the church to rebirth. We got to go back to the birthing of the church. Amen. The book of Acts. Amen. Amen. I got three or four amens. The book of Acts. The birthing of the church. For us to rebirth we got to get back in line with how it was birthed. Amen? And you know I'm big. I, I, I said a lot. The power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, growing up, uh, growing up, and I thank God, I grew up in Pine Grove Church. And you all know my story. Christine and I ministered there with Brother Jeff Edwards for 20 years. And, 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 but I think back about my childhood growing up in there. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. But I know from my perspective, 
I didn't hear a lot about the Holy Ghost. Well, we preached about out of every book but Acts, I think. You know, maybe that's just me. I don't, I'm just thinking back. We didn't talk a lot about the gifts. Amen. We, but, but to rebirth, to get back, that was the word from Pastor Brian that God downloaded him to rebirth. We got to get rebirth back into what the church was birthed as. Amen. The book of Acts was, got its name from the actions of the church. Amen. So I, you've heard, I think I said this last time I preached. So out in this world, as you're going at Walmart, going down, as Brother Brian says, aisle 13, the, does, does, the, does the people that around you see the actions of the church? You know what I'm saying? So we're at a threshold. God don't make mistakes. So I go back to that pastor's pen. We talked about rebirthing. And then we got to talk about rebuilding. And something Brother Jeff said that night, it, it, just, it made my spirit leap when he talked about the remnants. Listen, you've heard Pastor Brian, and I, I've said it too, that God is sovereign. He does not make mistakes. You know, you heard Pastor Brian say that Kobe didn't catch God by surprise. Well, what's that? I didn't see that coming. Amen. But the Bible tells me that he can get good out of the bad. Amen. Amen. We, we, we quote Second Chronicles 7, 14 a lot. If my people who are called by my name, why did he say that? Because he said, when I send the pestilences, when I send the famine, the hard times to get your attention and you repent, humble yourself. They, what does it say? Then I'll hear and I will heal your land. Amen. So we're at a threshold church. We're crossing over the threshold in the realms of destiny. And the battle increases dramatically. How many of you have been in a battle? Come on. I, 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 know, I know you all, I know y'all smart. How many of you know this house, this church has been in a battle? Huh? How many of you know that the body of Christ has been in a battle? A battle is not against flesh and blood. Amen. I, I think about when I, when I quote that scripture, I think about the scripture that says, one day we're going to look at the devil and say, is this the one? Come on. I want to remind you. As you step through this door, you have power and authority over the devil. Amen. Amen. By the blood of the Lamb and the power of the Holy Ghost, each and every one of you that are born again, spirit-filled, have power to put him in his place. Amen. So, so I mean, let me try to get back on track to where, uh, thank you, Holy Ghost. So, of course, there's two definitions to the threshold. Now, we already talked about the, the little wooden or metal strip you step across coming into a door. But I, I want to read this one to you. In case I don't know if I had that on point or not. But I want to read this one to you. A threshold. Get this. The magnitude or intensity that must be exceeded for a certain reaction, phenomenon, result, or condition to occur or be manifested. I'm going to say that again because that's a lot. I had to chew on that for a couple hours the other day. A threshold is the magnitude or intensity that must be exceeded for a certain reaction, a phenomenon, or result to occur or be manifested. Church, reason I told you earlier, the door is open, and I'm asking you to step through. We got to exceed our comfort zone. Amen. We, 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 uh, we, we can come to church and get a little touch. Well, that felt good. And I, when I walk out of here, that, that felt good. But, but, but we got to exceed our comfort zone to go into the destiny on the other side. Amen. We, 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 we've got to, we, we got the magnitude or intensity that must be exceeded. See, we're at a level where it feels good. It feels good. Well, praise and worship was good. Man, that was good. That, 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 that touched me. But when we walk out the door, we, 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 we don't take the whole package with us. We got to exceed our comfort zone. And I, I looked at this. I'm going to give you a definition inside of a definition. A phenomenon. It's a fact or situation that is observed to exist or happen. Listen, especially when one, with, when one whose cause or explanation is in question. I need to say that again because I, I got it twisted. Phenomenon means it's a fact or situation that is observed to exist or happen, especially one whose cause or explanation is in question. So I, I mentioned Walmart, aisle 13 earlier, about what, what does the people see when they see you? How many of you know there's a lot question, a lot of people out there questioning? Amen. And, and you can tell them how good Sunday morning felt, but are you showing them? Come on, is your actions, come on, is your actions, are, are you exceeding that comfort zone, that, that comfort realm? Are they seeing the book of Acts in action? Come on. 
Come on, this is me too. It's not just you. Remember the old saying, one out, three back? This is for me too. So I said all that. We're, I'm going to say this again. I said it earlier. We're standing at the door. The door's open. The door's open. And I'm going back. I got sidetracked. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Back to the, 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 the remnant. Again, God does not make mistakes. And the word that God gave me that night on that pastor's panel, I keep pointing here, this is where we're sitting, was rebuild. It's going to be rebuilding off the remnant. Amen. And when I say that is, when you start to rebuild something, you don't go out and buy a new piece of ground. You pour a brand new footer. And you start putting up a brand new frame. When you rebuild, you rebuild off what's left standing. Amen. We've gone through a year that's, there's just a few left standing. Amen. But the church, amen, is about to rebuild. And this is what God showed me as I went into November. I'm not November, thank you. As I went into February, from rebirth and rebuild, God began to stir in me. For rebirth, it's going to take repentance. Amen. And the rebuild is going to take revival. Amen. And when I say revival, I know some of you kind of cringe. You're thinking, oh, you're talking about a week long of services where we just come show up and get, head out here because I got to get up and go to work the next morning. I'm talking about revival as the church. I'm talking about revival as individuals. You don't have to come meet me here for revival. Amen. All you got to do is meet with God. Amen. And let the Holy Spirit have his way. But revival, the true church, the remnant is going to be rebuilt through revival. And so today, I, I said all that. I'm going to try to get into to this because I, I know my calling. You know, I questioned it for a long time. But my, you know, there's different parts of the body. Amen. <laughs> We're not all Pastor Brian's. Amen. We're not all a Tanya Bridgewater's. Thank God we're not all Joey Hicks's. Amen. But we're a body that functions. It takes many parts. And so I, I realize I'm not an evangelist. Amen. And I think I've shared this with you before. I woke up about seven years ago. I was praying, God, I'm in transition. God, I know you're moving me. What is it? What's the gifting on my life right now? God, what am I stepping into? And I woke up. I, I prayed that and I woke up that next morning at 419 a.m. And I love numbers when God speaks. And I don't want to make it up, but when God speaks, I know it. And I looked at that clock and it said 419. I thought, oh man, that, that's, that's, that's significant. It hit me right here. And I didn't even get it out of my mouth. Okay, God, what does that mean? He said, read John 419. God, I've been praying, God, what is it, God? What is it, God? And I got my Bible. I ran in there. I grabbed this old Bible. I opened it up and it said, sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. And I said, what? <laughs> yeah, I've been chewing on that for seven years. Amen. But, but, but recognize that you have a gift. Amen. You have a calling. It's not just the preachers, the pastors. Amen. Each and every one of you are born again, spirit filled, has a gift. You have a part in the body that you have to function. I wholeheartedly believe that the body of Christ suffers from paralysis. How can I say that? Because many of us are not functioning in our gift. Amen. God wants, I'm getting ahead of myself. In 1 Corinthians, God wants healing touches. God wants words of wisdom. But many of us don't know. We're saying, God, I wish I knew what I was doing. Next thing you know, 20 years go by, and you're still saying, God, I wish I knew what my gift was. Well, today, amen, hallelujah, today it's going to come revealed to you, amen? With that being said, I want to talk about wisdom. Proverbs 4, 5 says, get wisdom, exclamation mark, by the way. Get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth, says the Lord. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. So how can we get wisdom? James 1, 5. We're going to run through these. If you lack wisdom, that's right, Brother Bobby. He's the ass of God who gives to everyone generously. All you got to do is ask. He'll give to you generously and without rebuke or blame. Listen, you may hear me this morning. You've been saved 20 years. You never asked. I'm not going to rebuke you or blame you. Today, it's yours. Amen. And it will be given to you. In Proverbs 2, 6, I spent a little time in this one. Proverbs 2, 6 says, God gives wisdom, semicolon. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Now, I never was that great in school. I'm, just be, I'm confessing, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I thought C was awesome. You know what I mean? I mean, I got a C. Woo, hallelujah. Yeah, I'm getting through this thing. So, so uh, English teachers, bear with me. 
But that semicolon jumped out at me when I read that. It says, God gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. And what I, what I, what I was reading on this was, that semicolon, it connects related yet independent clauses. And so, so when I saw that, I was like, God gives wisdom. But it says, from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. I've already told you how easy it is to get wisdom. Amen, today. But, but, here, but here, this is what God showed me. When I became born again, when I walked down the aisle, aisle, that aisle I'll never forget it. I, I, you've heard my testimony. I was 12 years old. And I was thinking, I'm a good kid. I'm a good kid. And it was a, it was a Baptist preacher. He said, bow your head and close your eyes. And I did. I was like, I'm good. I'm good. And I, and he didn't, I didn't say it out loud. And he goes, there's good people in hell. And I'm thinking, whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. And I was like, mm, okay. Uh, and I looked up and I see my dad walk the aisle. I see my mom walk the aisle for salvation. I thought, I need to be saved. Amen. The Holy Spirit was drawing me. And, and when I came to that altar and I repent, I, 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 I don't even remember what I said, to be honest with you. But I remember there was a change. I remember that I got touched. Amen. I remember the Holy Spirit was there, showed up. And, and, and I didn't get a, a physical heart transplant, but I became a new man. Amen. A new kid at that time because of the Holy Spirit. And I say that to say this. If you're born again, you got the Holy Spirit, you got all wisdom in you. Amen. Amen. You got, oh, I got a few hand claps. But don't you get this? You, you got all wisdom in you. But, but why is it not being manifested? Because we're not listening to the voice of God for the knowledge and understanding. You know what I'm saying? Because when I got the Holy Spirit, I didn't get just part of him. Amen. When I got the Holy Spirit, I didn't just get half of him. Right? He's not a half-time God. Amen? He's a full-time God, all-time God. Amen? It's in me. It's in you. And so, so with that being said, what, what's the problem? We're not, we're not listening to the voice of God. We quench the Spirit every day. I'm going to say it. We quench the Spirit every Sunday. Come on, I know more of you agree with me than that. But when we come in this house, how many, uh, okay, I'll prove it. How many of you pack, pack baggage in and pack it back out with you? I told you, Matthew 18, where two or more come together, agreeing, touching anything on earth that shall be done by our Father in heaven. But yet we pack crap in. We, 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 we feel it on the outside. Boy, it feels good. Then we pack that crap back out. Come on. We, we, we. This is, this is what God showed me when we come together. And it's not your fault. I think the church, man set up church where it'd be comfortable, and we've let you down as far as equipping. And I say we, I'm talking about years ago. I, I could go all the way back to, the, to when the pilgrims came over, but that's a whole other message. But, but we, 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 we pack that stuff in, we pack it out, but we don't leave changed. But why is that? We quench the Spirit. And, and, and so the Holy Spirit, I told you this, I won't get back on track. You're born again, receive the Spirit. You've got wisdom in you, but we're not hearing the voice of God. For, okay, thank you, Holy Ghost. We're not hearing the voice of God for the understanding and knowledge. This is what I've seen. This is where I was going earlier. Many of us come in feeling good, and we run on emotion instead of walking in the Spirit. You know what I'm saying? Church has become about a feel-good social club. And I'm not pointing fingers at El Corn, but let's be honest. Amen? Some of us show up just because, hey, it's Sunday. I need to check my name off and let everybody see me. Amen. Hey, hey, you know, and, and make my connections and, and listen to this awesome praise team. And boy, it feels good. We hear a word from Brother Brian that makes us squirm. And we receive what we want. We push the other back. And we run on emotion. Woo, it feels good. But we, walk, we don't walk in the spirit. The spirit is moving up and down these aisles, in these rows. And, here, and, I, and I said this earlier, I believe. We... We, will, we, we, we keep the Holy Spirit dormant. And I think that's the best way to say it. And, it, and I realize I'm preaching. Don't think I'm harping at you or harking on you. But I'm just telling you the time is now and the door is open. And it's up to you and I to step through. But I want to give you some scripture. John 16, 13. Talking about the Holy Spirit and the wisdom and the knowledge and understanding. He says, however, when the Spirit, capital S, when the Spirit of truth is come, remember I talked about us receiving the Holy Spirit, He will guide you into all truth. I told you you had all wisdom in you. 
He will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Amen. The Holy Spirit, he will guide you in all truth. And whatever God speaks through him, he shall speak. Holy Spirit speaking to you right now. Amen. Holy Spirit was speaking to you earlier when I said the door's open. What is it that you need? Holy Spirit was drawing you for salvation. Holy Spirit was drawing you to step out for your healing and for your deliverance. Holy Spirit was speaking because it's God's will. He will show you the things to come. Isaiah eleven two, 2. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him. I, I'm, I'm going to speak this over you. Man, I'm, I'm going to prophesy this over you. And the Holy okay. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest on you. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord shall be on you. Amen. Receive that. Amen. John 14, 26. I love giving you word. John 14, 26. I'm sorry, note takers. I'll, I'll email you a handout or something. <laughs> John 14, 26. But the comforter, somebody say comforter. The Holy Ghost. <laughs> Whom the Father will send in my name. Remember, Jesus said, I'm going away, but I will not leave you comfortless. Amen. That was a word for you and I. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I, but we're not alone. Amen. He said, the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. There's that all things again. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatever I, and Jesus said, whatever I have said to you, Meaning the promises, the Holy Word becomes reality when we allow the Holy Spirit to be active in our lives. You've got wisdom in you, but it does, the understanding and the knowledge does not come to play until you allow the Holy Spirit to be Holy Spirit. Amen. We've got to die to our flesh and surrender to Him. And so with that being said, I'm going to jump into 1 Chronicles 12. I'm just going to read you. I told Brother Casey, don't worry about putting that up. I'm going to read it. I want you to get out your Bible, get out your Bible lab. Get out your technology. Amen. The second Chronicles 12. I'm sorry. First Chronicles chapter 12. Amen. And because we've been talking about the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. See church, and I'm going to say this again, this threshold that we're at, we can either say, God, I see it. God, I see your promises. God, I, I see, I see what you want to do, but I'm just not ready. Amen. I just don't know about that. I'm afraid of that. And we can go around the mountain again. Amen. But I believe, church, that it's time. It's time. God, and again, God's sovereign. Everything that we've gone through this last year, God has got us set up. We're ripe. We're ripe for the church to be the church. Our community is ripe for the church to be the church. I'm reminded of John 21. I'm going to talk about the gifts of, of the Spirit. John 21 says that the, the, you know, the book can't contain all the miracles of God, but these were written so that you may believe. Amen. When, when we allow the Holy Spirit to be Holy Spirit and the signs and wonders begin to flow, it's going to draw people in. I had a pastor tell me one time, he's talking spiritually now. I mean, maybe it be physically, but I'm going to tell you spiritually. He said, when a church is on fire, people will come and watch it burn. Amen. And so I believe in the Holy Ghost fire that, that when, when, when we allow the Holy Spirit to be Holy Spirit, people's going to be, be drawn like a moth to the flame and we're going to see a true harvest. Amen. Do you believe that with me? Will you agree with me? That's where we're at. Will you agree with me that we'll step through this threshold and receive what, receive what does said the Lord? And so I'm going to read a few verses out of 1 Corinthians 12. So I set you up about telling you how smart you are. I set you up by telling you that you got all wisdom in you for this very first verse. And it says this, verse 1. Now about the spiritual gifts, talk about the endowments of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, I don't want you to be uninformed. Amen. You had no more excuses. Amen. I love KJV. Amen. He said, I don't want you to be ignorant. No more. I done told you all wisdom's in you. Amen. I done told you how to activate it. So now's the time. You had no more excuses. I have no more excuses. Amen. He said, I don't want you to be uninformed or ignorant. And, and this, this jumped out at me when I read verse two. You know that when you were pagans, you were led off after speechless idols. However, you were led off 
you, you followed after them. And I thought, when, when, this, when this stirred in me, I thought about the word that Dr. Billy Graham said. And you've heard Brother Brian say this many times. But based upon the parable of the seed and the sower, three quarters of the seed didn't make it. They fell on bad ground, but one quarter did. And I'll never forget when, Dr. Billy, when Brother Brian said this, Dr. Billy Graham said, he said, based upon that, I believe that just a quarter of the church is truly saved. Did y'all get to hear me? I'm not judging you, right? I'm not, judge, I'm not judging anybody. But I'm talking, this is the word of the Lord today. I, this is what he downloaded me. But I say that to say this. I see so many people in the house, in God's house, chasing after silly things. I mean, the first, first thing that pops up is, oh, that draws my attention. And, and it, may have, it, may, it may have a little bit of scripture, but a, a world full of what? And, but people chase after it. I mean, the, again, I go back to running on emotion. It, that, that felt good. I'm going to chase after that. And not, not just Elkhorn. I'm talking about, I, I visited a lot of churches before here. And, and so many are let off astray by speechless idols. But he says on down here, I want to start in verse 4. Now there are, I love the amplified version on this, there are distinctive varieties of spiritual gifts. Special abilities given by the Holy Spirit is what it is. But it's the same Spirit that grants them. Verse 5. And there are distinctive varieties of ministries and services. But it's the same Lord who is served. Verse 6. And there are distinctive ways of working but it's the same God who produces all things in all believers. So what that tells me is, and as I already told you, that each of you have a gift. One. Number two is there are different ministries and services that these gifts can operate in. And number three is said, and there are distinctive ways of working. There's distinctive ways of, 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 of these, these gifts being worked. Prime example. I, I did praise and worship for, well, I played music for 20 plus years before I came here. But I did praise and worship for probably about 12 years at Pine Grove. And, and the praise and worship team here. Listen. But my gifting is not singing as, as far as a spiritual gift. Amen? And I, I, I see this in our praise team. Your gifting is ministry. It may, it may be a word of knowledge. It may be prophecy. But, but your, your avenue is worship. Your avenue is your, is your instruments, is your singing. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so you may have a spiritual gift. You may be in the ministry of music. And you may, it may work in this certain way. Does, that make, does everybody get that? Was that clear? I hope it was. So, but this, this is it. Verse 7. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna fly through the rest of this. But to each one, say each one. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, you're one. <laughs> right, say it back to him, you're one. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit. We're talking about believers. To each believer is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Okay, we're going to run through this. To one is given through the Holy Spirit a message of wisdom. To another a word of knowledge and understanding according to the same spirit. To another, wonder-working faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the same spirit. And remind you, this is what's to be functioning in the rebirth church. Amen? This is what's functioning in the church. It should be. Number verse 10. And to another, the working of miracles. And to another, prophecy. Right? And to another, discerning spirits. Amen? Amen? That's right, interpretation. I must have missed a page. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. And to another discerning of the spirits. And to an, oh, here we are. To another various kinds of unknown tongues. And to another interpretation of tongues. Now, and, and I, I, felt, I felt like I needed to teach you on this for a moment. The Bible tells us of two types of tongues. I don't want nobody to be confused. This is talking about a word of, uh, in tongues. But when that happens, that has to be an interpreter. That's Bible. Now, you may have a prayer language in tongues. The Bible says that your prayer language is in private where you talk to God. Amen? Romans 8 tells me, and, and this is how it came to realization to me, there's sometimes I don't want to pray, but the Spirit of God in me begins to groan. Amen? Begins to groan. And, and I think, God, I don't know what to, but it just begins to flow. Amen? And so, so there's two types of tongues. But this is talking about, because I'll say, that, say this, thank you, Holy Ghost. I believe you should have a prayer language. Amen, as a spirit-filled believer. Not, not, not for a, well, look at me. Not, not, not to con cause confusion, but in your prayer closet. But this is talking about various kinds of tongues with a word, and which has to be and followed up with interpreter. But get this, all these things, all these gifts are brought about by one Holy Spirit, distributing to each one individually just 
as he chooses. Hallelujah. Amen. Just as he chooses. Oh, Praise I'll have you come on back up. I, I said I'd say this. This is where we're at, church. Amen. The rebirthing that God started in January, well, actually, right before January, the rebirthing is rebirthing the church back into what the church is supposed to be. Man has made church comfortable. Amen. Man has made church where it feels good to me. I get what I want. I go home. I've done said that a dozen times. Amen. But it, we are being, we are, we are being, can I say that? We have been, we are being rebirthed into what we're called to be. That's why I went over 1 Corinthians 12. Because we are at the threshold. And I'm going to say this. As for me and my house, we're not going around the mountain anymore. Amen. I want to know, Elkhorn, are you with me? As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're not going around the mountain anymore. Amen. Yeah, my, I, I said it earlier. I, I used to be afraid what you thought about me. I used to wouldn't lay hands on somebody because I was afraid what they'd think. I, on. I used to wouldn't speak a word of knowledge to you because I thought, no, they won't receive it. God, I'm uncomfortable, but not anymore. Come on, Amen. Not anymore. Not anymore. I'm expecting revival. Yeah. Amen. I'm expecting a great awakening. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I'm expecting God to be God. Amen. And the church to be the church. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. On. Verse 28. I want to read a few more verses to you. I'm going to jump down to verse 28, 1 Corinthians. So God has appointed and placed in the church, amen, in this house, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then those who work miracles. Come on, y'all. I mentioned the fivefold gift of the ministry earlier. Then those with gifts of healings, the helpers, the administrators, and speakers in various kinds of unknown tongues. Uh oh. Verse 29, are all apostles? Remember I talked about us being a body. Each and every one of you got a gift that takes us all. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all who work miracles? Do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Verse 31, but earnestly desire, he says, and strive for the greater gifts. And the last part of that verse is this. And yet I will, he said, show you a still more excellent way. And yet I will show you still more excellent way. So when I read that, I thought, God, you said we could desire the gifts. God, how do I get them? And I was, some of you say, I don't want them. Well, listen, the altar's open. Amen? Because I want it all. Amen? I'm believing it all. And so, but he says, desire and strive for the greater gifts. Then he goes, I will show you the way. And you know where I'm going with this. Right into chapter 13, he talks, you can speak in tongues, but if you don't have love, you're just a sounding symbol. I can stand up here and preach to you all day. If I don't love you, I'm just a bunch of noise. We can play church all we want and look good. But if I don't love you, if you don't love the world, if I can't take time to minister to you, you know, I want to say this. I, I mentioned to Holly and Donna and Christina, and I, I know Drew and Sarah were here last Wednesday night. We stayed here till 10 o'clock, ministering to a young lady that was broken. I couldn't imagine what she's going through. And I could say, I'll pray for you, and head out the door and miss my threshold. You could have said, We'll be praying for you. Here, here's a prayer cloth. And I'll see you Sunday. And we could have missed our threshold. We'd have stayed till 12 o'clock. That's what it took. But I, Drew and I was with them. And, and I don't want to leave nobody out. But Christina, Donna, and Holly. So let's, let's go to the altar. Let's get the anointing full. And, and I know you stepped through that threshold when you came in here, Holly. But you don't realize when you, what you stepped into, it, 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 it broke chains. It, it, it caused a release in the house. Did you receive that? It, it caused a release in the house. And church, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just presenting it to you. Don't turn around this open and miss this open door. Don't leave 
and miss out on what God's wanting to release. Because here's the thing. I've decided I'm a part of the remnant. There's two parts you can be a part of. You can be a part of the remnant or you can be a part of the rubble. Amen? Are you standing this morning? Are you the church? Come on. There's a harvest waiting. Come on. It's waiting on you and I. And I, I, I'm done. I, I'm done. Amen. I won't be the church of the living God. I want, I want the people to look at me and say, I see his actions. Amen. Come on. I used to wouldn't pray for you at Walmart aisle 13, but I will now. Amen. Yeah. I, 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 will, I will not lead you to the Lord at Kroger, but I will now. Because I'm stepping to the door. Amen. And so with that being said, Amen. I want you to stand to your feet. Acknowledge the threshold. Some of you, many of you, are at a threshold. But will you step through it today? I'm going to go back to Matthew 18 as I wrap this up. The Holy Spirit is here because He said two or more come together in His name. He's in the midst. Listen, you can't get saved without the Holy Spirit. You can't get healed without the Holy Spirit. You can't get delivered without the Holy Spirit. But I got good news for you. Amen. The Holy Spirit's here. Amen. And so this morning, this morning, what is your need? We're going to be intentional today about ministry time. Amen. We got an anointing hole here. Pastor Drew is ready to pray with you. I, I, I got Mark and Renee Kessinger here this morning. If you're lost, Holy Spirit is drawing you. I mean, the Holy Spirit is drawing you if you're lost. You say, how do I know if I'm lost? If you're questioning it right now, good chances you're lost. You might say, I got saved when I, but I don't know for sure. Do not leave without making it right. Amen. And so right now, as the praise team begins to play, I just want to ask you, what is your need this morning? I believe we all have needs. But are you willing to step through the threshold? So, Father God, right now, in Jesus' name, amen, we delivered the word that you started in us for this, for this morning. And, God, we know you're not done. God, uh, through, through, through our history in the last month or so, God, I've seen you move mightily at the end of the service. And so, God, right now, as I spoke earlier, I speak release over this house. I speak release over these people. Now is your time, church, for you to step through the threshold to your destiny, what God has for you. And so, God, right now, as we spoke that out, God, right now, do what you do best. You are present, and you are ready to save, heal, and deliver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The altars are open.